Hey friends, so I'm gonna give you a tour of my garden today. It's right there. My back doors are here. So as soon as you walk out, it is right there. And I will say that I'm not too proud of it, but it's all perspective, right? So I'm learning a lot. There's a lot of challenges right now. <laughs> Weather, pests, if you've already watched my videos, you already know and i have gotten some remedies home remedies that i'm gonna try and i'm also gonna apply some nematodes um for my pest my famous little um mouse rat i don't know which one it is but i'm going to apply i really don't want to set a trap and have a dead mouse that i have to deal with mm -mm. that is just not what i want to do I'm not in the business of feeding them. So it's going to be some cotton balls. Let's see how it's in my finger. <laughs> and my handy dandy peppermint oil. I only use the high end stuff because uh, you want to use the high end stuff. Anyways, so that's my little ramble. I'm going to show you what it looks like, but just beware. <laughs> It's not all glamorous. It's not like um, Pinterest nice. Um, and anyways, let me take you there. So just remember, it is not about it, it is not about what you're losing. It is what you're gaining. So I'm learning a lot. So if I back up, so if you're new, let me back up. This is the entrance. I have an arbor I decorated for Halloween, and this is new. I didn't have this last year. And I was super excited to add this until I realized, do you see that? I think I've got some like nesting holes in there. And what should have been one hay bale is now a mixture of areas that are being utilized. I am scared. What's in here? Oi, I'm scared. Oh, yeah, I think I have an animal in there. I am scared to look. So, oh, I'm going to put some cotton balls in there. That is my entrance. While I'm there, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I am not sure how many I'm going to do, but I know I've got a few places. So, really, it's just one drop because it's very potent. And one drop will do, and then I get to refill them later on as the scent dissipates I'm gonna do about five it smells so good already and because he's attacking I'm saying he I attacking my peppers as well okay before I lay out my good stuff mm, this is so good <laughs> I don't know I think I'm just gonna <laughs> I think I'm just gonna do it right, like right there. I'm not I'm not gonna mess around too much. I'm just gonna drop. Boom. It's in there. So if we walk a little bit further in, this is where he's eating my peppers. I have a display of pepper sticks, if you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck just a couple right here because I know he crawls in this area because I've already saw him crawl through there once. And there are droppings. So if you pay close attention because, sorry, I knew it wasn't caterpillars because there was no droppings. There was no caterpillar droppings, but there are mouse droppings back here. That bed smells amazing. <laughs> so this bed has things that have been here all summer, since spring actually. The Blue Victoria Salvia, that actually started blooming again, as well as um, the little bit of Snapdragons that I have left. And then I added a couple of things. Um, the new stuff that I seeded didn't do really well, except for these two um, eggplants these are new 
which I'm just waiting to see how things are gonna turn out for these. And then I'll cut back to one plant. Um, this is a new okra that I just added. This one was from the nursery. And then over here, I have this Brussels sprouts that have been here. They were struggling. This area has a lot of heat. So now they're just like growing like crazy and it's looking beautiful. So I think I'm gonna add a lot more of what I'm growing indoors in here and hope for the best. That's the bed that you can see from our sitting area. And so I wanted it to be colorful and special and um, it's got some color, but it looks pretty like uh, struggling. <laughs> it does. All right, let's move on. This one really looks nice in a way uh, because it still has some color. This is a potato vine that I rescued from the compost. This marigold has done beautifully. It's finally filling in because I chopped it in half a while ago. And then I have a lot of Vic Victoria salvia here. And then back here, I have some Brussels sprouts that I need to cut. I need to come and cut this. I'll do that right now. But um, they were struggling as well. See how there's, it's just been a lot of rain, but we've got some mold issues here. So I need to come back and clean some of it off to get some air but it's still surviving there and it looks cute and then I added in some new peppers which they look like they're coming along but you know how they're struggling here they got some spider mites and maybe possibly some aphids that's what I've been having a hard time with this right here is some leaf miner and some spider mites. And then you see how I had two? Well, this one is not doing well. So that's why I left them because I wanted them to grow their second pair of leaves before I decided which one to keep. And this one did made the decision from, from me easier. Um, and then I've got over here, these are lunchbox peppers that struggled with our heat. And it's just, I don't know. I think I've gotten like two or three peppers from those three plants and then one that didn't do anything at all. <laughs> um, and then this is our cucumber, Armenian cucumber that has really struggled. And then you see I've got some pests in there crawling away. Oh, you can see it better here. Look at that. You see those? Mm-mm. So I'm going to do another round of the Nema totes and hopefully that takes care of it. Um, over here, um, I have a lot of new seedlings that I added from the nursery. These are marigolds that reseeded. And I'm not, yeah, these are all marigolds. All of, this is, I had like four marigold plants here and they've all reseeded in this area. And I also got some over here, like you see on the gravel got one there and then oh I had another one right here got another one right there so let's come back over here this is my first swiss yard and see how I need to come and do some trim trimmings so I gotta cut some of that this is a brussels sprouts that has also been here all summer and now it's just loving life and then I added a bunch of broccoli and cabbage. So these are all from the nursery. I've got one here that I seeded myself. And then I have a daisy here. I think it's struggling though because this area is already getting a lot of shade. So the direction of the sun has definitely changed. It used to come from that end and then hover over all of the beds. Now it's coming over on this side and then crossing over. So my beds near this fence line that are too close to the fence are getting some shade already um, which I've known that since last year I just don't know how it is over here because most of all that is new so I also wanted to show you how my peppers bell peppers are doing I just harvested two yesterday and I'm finally getting some so this is producing for me you see there's a couple there it struggled a lot 
and then I got a bunch of aphids but you know those nematodes are really working because I don't see aphids I don't see aphids <laughs> and let's not forget my cabbage that just grew on its own so I had one that I harvested and then I just cut it and left the roots in so that it still nourished the soil and then look what I have on its own it just started to grow and it looks like now it's three it looks beautiful I just love the way cabbage looks this area is kind of a mixture of things I've got some Mexican sour gherkins that I have yet to try a gherkin from it is flowering but I think something's eating it because I um, don't see any fruit and I thought it was the heat first and then now it just started to grow massive but still no fruit I do love the way it looks though I love how it's cascading over um, but you know you have to be careful because it will head in directions you don't want it to go like I don't want it to grab on this is a sunflower see how beautiful I'm still growing sunflowers um, if I haven't mentioned it before I'm in South Texas so it's still pretty hot even though today is nice and fresh there we go um, so I had some cucumbers here I'm sorry I had some squash here from the nursery that were doing really good and then they were attacked by the squash vine borer so I went ahead and I reseeded and now I've got one two three four now I have to be careful though but you see how my issue is still there and I have to look for eggs so now that they're getting bigger they might get attacked again this one right here I think it's time for it to be pulled um, and these two look good but it's because I've had the a vine borer issue I have to be very cautious in looking for eggs because once you have an egg you're gonna get it again I have an eggplant over here from the nursery as well um, looks like it's struggling a bit I think it's because we had a lot of rain but I do have an eggplant that's growing it's so beautiful I don't know I think it's got some maybe I think it's got an issue there but I just love that it's there it makes me happy on this side I had some mint hopefully it's gonna grow back I forgot about it and then it dried on me um, but maybe I still I can still save it um, over here I have some lemon balm and the okra that looks like is doing well it's the first time growing okra and I didn't grow it from seed so I just liked it here because this area gets a lot of Sun and then I wanted the height the same idea with the sunflowers I wanted the height and then something short down here and the squash would trail out this way so I thought it would be perfect but we'll see if we still get lucky if we come over here on this side I've got a whole lot of everything <laughs> um, my peppers were attacked by aphids like so many like and I lost a lot of leaves but after the nematodes I don't see them anymore like the leaves actually feel like leaves before there was a lot of icky stuff and I don't know I think they might be doing better I have to come over here and harvest some of these peppers these habanero plants are amazing they just grew so many peppers I will say that they're not as hot as others but I think it's perfect I don't know if some of these are good because they look very discolored but I will keep them um, I've got a lot of these are all jal jalapenos these are new and they came with peppers already beautiful and these are all my serrano peppers which there's a lot of them and a lot of them are ready to be harvested so I'm gonna do that 
and then this right here is marigold um, they struggled a bit but now it looks like we're blooming so I'm excited because there's a lot of them let's head over here this is where I start to get a little bit more organized these are all uh, tomatoes except for um, I added in here some lemon basil yeah this is lemon basil um, I've got um, regular basil that I need to come back and trim but all these are tomatoes and then in between here I added all of the cherry tomatoes these are all new and they are growing only one of them was attacked by my famous pest but overall I think they're okay um, I will say that they don't look as healthy but maybe it's the same problem all my other plants are having but I do reference the book a lot and I am getting some more nutrition for them and I think I'm gonna end up testing my soil to see what I need over here I have my giant zinnias that I wasn't expecting them to come over so much but you know I actually enjoy having a little walkway there not bad some fennel here down here I have a flowering kale which is I think super beautiful since it's just like out there and then these gorgeous zinnias look at the color of the zinnia it's gorgeous some of these need to be harvested and then I had some seeds over here but um, I don't think they're getting enough sun here's the potato vine again that came from the compost and then I've got quite a few of these uh, randoms that I got from the nursery these are some Asian greens this is some garlic chives cilantro this is um, some dill and then I've got some parsley on this side and then these volunteer tomatoes which I have yet to get a tomato so I don't know if I have a lot of pollinators so I might have to hand pollinate and then this is a coleus that I moved and it looks like it likes it over here better and then this last bit over here is basically going to be my beans and peas pretty soon. Um, this cabbage, or these cabbages have been here all summer. They didn't do so well. Um, definitely not doing cabbage in the summer here because it just, it didn't do well at all. So I snuck in some bean seeds and I've got two there and some that I added here did not germinate um, I've got a carrot that um, actually germinated from a while ago when the heat of the summer was still going and then it looks like I have a new one there the um, zinnia here tipped over so I might have to come back and deal with that the stuff that I seeded did not germinate here this is some um, onion chives and then i think this is a broccoli looks like it's struggling a bit and then it always surprises me when plants do this look at this zinnia it's just doing its thing and it's just being held by a thread like the harsh wind did that and it's still going and blooming its first bloom on the branch that is holding by a thread pretty crazy um, I've got a nasturtium snuck in here which I'm gonna add a lot more soon and then a really really old bean that needs to go um, some of these volunteer tomatoes are also gonna go just because I think it's time to do some cleanup and then on some of these I had my pumpkins which didn't survive because of my aphid problem and then I added zinnias these red zinnias over here and they're doing okay but they did struggle a bit I've got a couple which I'll leave but 
I need to harvest some of it. So what do you think? Mm, I need some work, right? <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to mention this one right here. Forgot to mention this one. This is where I had all of my zinnias. I mean, I may put a, an exaggerated amount of zinnias in this bed and I finally took them down except I left this one just because it had a lot of blooms but I don't think it's happy. It was about to fall. <laughs> um, I added some sunflowers back there because this, this bed's going to get a lot of the sun right now. Uh, actually throughout the whole fall winter and I wanted the sunflowers to be tall and then have the small plants in the bottom but yeah my pest is eating my sunflowers as well so I had quite a few that germinated there that died and then looks like maybe I'll have one two three um, this is a watermelon which people thought that I was crazy for doing it but I'm really just testing it this is the sunniest area and I just want to see what it does uh, I learned better that way. This is actually another watermelon. It's sticking around. And this is a volunteer zinnia. Volunteer zinnia. And this is lavender that I got from the nursery. I really wanted to have the purple color here. We'll see. And that's it. That is all my garden. I want to show you what I do with the nematodes because I think it's working. So let me do that. This is the nematodes that I purchased. They have to be refrigerated um, or else they will die because they are alive. They do come packaged um, with a cooling pack, which is really beneficial. And really, I mean, you let it sit in here for about 20 minutes. Uh, once you apply the nematodes and you shake it up pretty good, let it sit, and then you can go and spray everything. Um, and this is 10 million. There is uh, one for less square footage. This one will do 400 square feet. Um, so I've already done one application with one spoonful, which is here for one gallon. And I think maybe I'll have just a tiny bit left to reapply again. Now I'm gonna apply it with the sprayer, but you don't have to. There's multiple ways to apply the nematodes. Um, I mean, it says to add 500 to the gallon. Uh, I don't know how you would be able to uh, count the nematodes. So, here we are. There. Now it's time to shake it up and wait. I want me to do this shake up again. <laughs> And you want to do it in the evening because, you know, if you have to keep them cool, 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 if you have to keep them refrigerated, <laughs> then um, that means they don't do well in the heat. I'm sure they'll die. <laughs> um, so, anyways, we're going to wait and then we'll spray. While we wait on that, I'm going to go pick up some of my peppers. And you know, I don't think I showed you like the walkway, so I'm going to do that too. Yep, you don't want to look at my lemon tree yet. It's been struggling. <laughs> but this is my little secret garden. And we're going to come over to the peppers. Here's everything I harvested. A lot of the basil. Let me move it over. And all those peppers. I really was focusing on taking a lot of the growth just because it needs time to recover. It has a lot of new growth, so I'm hoping that it gives it a little boost there, especially after applying a second coat of the nematodes but I definitely don't see the ants and the aphids like I did before. <sighs> a bouquet of basil. 
<sighs> smells so good. Mm. <laughs> well, it's been 20 minutes, so it is time. <laughs> so we're going to work our way from the back because this is where I lose light first. So we've got to scoot over. And now we got to just pump it. Do y'all remember that song? Huh? Pump the jam. <laughs> so I will link this and the Nema Toads. And I'm just gonna have to pump it to get some tension and then spray away. So I'm spraying everything. There were some animals here and some ants. So let's just try to take care of some of that. Just gonna let it soak in there. See, there's still ants. Ah. Um, and spray away. I'm just gonna do this. There's nothing special to it. Just a good spray. Well, I sprayed everything. And it feels amazing. I think it's like 70 degrees right now. It feels so good. That's it. Well, I hope this helps. And don't feel discouraged if um, your garden looks like mine. <laughs> because in the next few years, you'll reflect back into all the things you learned because of it. So I hope you have a great day and thank you for watching.